personifies the letter as if it were a human. She begins by explaining how happy the letter is. She ends the poem in the same way, but with the little added flirtatious twist that the writer is about to tuck the letter into her bosom until it is posted the next day. The poem was sent to Samuel Bowles, a married man. No wonder it is a coin. Dickinson wrote lots of letters to Bowles and some to his wife Mary. Many have a flirtatious flair, some have a lovesick air, and some sound a bit desperate. This one is playful. I love the image of the old clock that kept an aim day, as if it were an anxious horse. We are reminded of a cuckoo clock sounding off at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and 6 a.m. And the poor letter is still being written. Dickinson chose a childlike adjective to open her poem. And rather than her characteristic dash, she uses two exclamation marks, combines it to give it an immediately playful and joyful tone. She imagined that her letter had eyes in its pages so that I could see what moved Dickinson to suddenly write at such a laborious pace. Rather, we might focus once again on what Dickinson doesn't wish to say rather than what she does. If we are to guess at what it is she wishes to communicate and what moves her, tell him, no, you may quibble there, for it would split his heart to know it. Dickinson dramatises two different reactions to this unspoken piece of information. Dismissed, dismissed so emphatically by the isolated and consequently emphasised no. A letter would quibble with the knowledge, a verb suggesting a minor slight objection, whilst his heart, entirely split by it, a far more serious reaction.